Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the MOPA Compact 20, a 20 watt fiber laser from Omtech. This fiber laser lives up to its name with a compact all-in-one design. Omtech claims that it is a must-have for DIY enthusiasts with its intuitive controls and effortless engraving on a large variety of materials. And the MOPA features give it an edge compared to non-MOPA fiber lasers. But does the Omtech MOPA Compact 20 live up to those claims? Let's find out. Before we begin, this 20 watt MOPA fiber laser was sent to me for review by Omtech. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this laser for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, you can use those links to help support my channel. We appreciate it. Let's get into it. The Omtech MOPA Compact 20 is a 20 watt MOPA fiber laser, which produces an infrared 1064 nanometer wavelength laser. This wavelength is perfect for engraving almost all metal and opaque plastics, so great for jewelry like gold, silver, brass, titanium, and stainless steel. Fiber lasers do not work on materials like wood, or transparent materials like glass or clear acrylic. Starting at the top, we see the Galvo scanning head. This uses a pair of Galvo mirrors, which can move rapidly to redirect the laser. These Galvos allow the laser to engrave at speeds of up to 10,000 millimeters per second. Most materials require speeds far less than that, but the Galvos are capable of moving that fast. All fiber lasers are pulsed lasers, meaning that they fire in quick pulses at a desired frequency. Traditional fiber lasers have a narrow range of frequencies, typically in the 20 to 80 kilohertz range. The MOPA Compact 20 has a much larger range of frequencies, from 1 kHz to 4000 kHz. This gives plenty of flexibility when it comes to using the frequency that works best for your materials, and you can achieve some pretty amazing results by varying the frequency, but we'll get back to that. This laser has another trick up its sleeves though. The Compact 20 is a MOPA laser. MOPA, which stands for Master Oscillator Power Amplifier, is a type of fiber laser that can not only vary the frequency of pulses, but also vary the waveform of each pulse. What this means for you is that MOPA lasers have another parameter that you can adjust to get the most out of your laser. You can achieve peak power at any frequency by also varying the pulse duration, something that normal fiber lasers cannot do. This is what lets you achieve results like these. The Galvos direct the laser through the focusing lens. The lens is interchangeable. The included lens gives a wider work area of 150mm by 150mm, but you can swap out the lens for one that more tightly focuses the laser for deeper engravings at the cost of a reduced work area of 110mm by 110mm. The Galvo scanning head attaches to the manual lifting stand. Using the knob at the top, you can raise or lower the head in order to focus the laser onto your material. Focusing is done in one of two ways. First, you can use the red focus dots. By pressing the focus button at the top, you turn on the two red dots. You then raise or lower the laser head until the two dots combine, then you are the correct distance away. The second method is using the included ruler to measure 335mm from the surface of your material to the line indicated on the head. I found that the dot method was about 2mm off of the ideal focus, so I mostly used the ruler method for my tests. Focusing is quick and easy though, taking only a couple of seconds. The MOPA Compact 20 has an inline red laser that is used for framing, so you can position your material correctly. Since it is in line with the main laser, it goes through the Galvo mirrors, so you can display the border of your design, the outmost contour, or even trace individual elements. I found the inline laser a little hard to see on some materials, especially darker materials like the black aluminum or black acrylic. Otherwise, the alignment of the red laser and the main laser is spot on. I didn't notice any offset between them, so I could trust the positioning. The laser head is rigidly attached to the lifting stand, with bolts on the bottom. This provides a sturdy platform, but it also means that there are limited adjustments that you can make to the position. You can move the laser head forwards and backwards on the stand, but there are no tilt adjustments. It's mostly a set it and forget it kind of placement. At the base of the MOPA Compact 20, we see the 150mm by 150mm work area, with threaded holes every 25mm. You can use the included bars to help position your material for repeat jobs. The base contains the JPT fiber laser source, as well as all of the electronics. On the front, we see a toggle switch for the optional rotary attachment, an emergency stop latch, and a keyed switch to power the laser source. On the back, we see the USB input, input for the optional foot switch, input for the rotary attachment, and power switch and input. There is also a grounding cable that is needed if you are using a non-grounded power outlet. The main fiber optic cable also comes out of the back, wrapped in a protective sleeve. I thought that the cable is unusually long when considering where the Galvo head is at. Assembly of the MOPA Compact 20 was simple. A couple of bolts to attach the stand to the base, and four more bolts to attach the Galvo scanning head. 
The printed manual was bare bones, just a couple of pages that only gave safety warnings. However, you can easily find the full manual on Omtech's website. I'm not sure why they didn't include the full manual. Turning to the software side, Omtech provides a copy of EZCAD on the included USB stick. The MOPA Compact 20 is also fully compatible with Lightburn. EZCAD isn't the most appealing software, but it gets the job done. You can create your own designs or import custom design files. You can also adjust all of the expected laser parameters. EZCAD doesn't scale well on modern display resolutions though, making adjusting settings a little bit more difficult. I found the Lightburn experience much more pleasant. I'd highly recommend picking up a license. All the features work as expected. I love the material test pattern for dialing in settings, and it works well even when adjusting frequency and Q pulse durations. One thing to note is that Lightburn and EZCAD do not play well together. They use different drivers, so to switch between them you need to uninstall the Lightburn driver to use EZCAD, and reinstall the driver when you want to go back. Lightburn has good documentation on the exact steps if you need it. My only disappointment with Omtech is that they do not provide a list of recommended settings for the MOPA Compact 20. There is a section in the manual that mentions general guidelines like aluminum requiring higher frequencies, or that plastic should use lower power and higher speeds, etc. But no actual numbers are given as a starting point. The only provided sample file is the EZCAD stainless steel color test pattern, which gives some good examples for stainless steel, but you'll need to spend some time testing other materials and finding out the settings yourself. I have a link to my small Lightburn material library in the description if you want to see what settings I use in my tests. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at how well the MOPA Compact 20 fiber laser performs. I loved working with stainless steel. You can create a full spectrum of different colors by varying the power, frequency, and pulse durations. Beautiful purples, greens, blues, yellows, and grays can be produced. Colors that I haven't been able to make on other non-MOPA fiber laser or diode lasers. It was fun making logos using various colors. You can also achieve dark and deeper engravings on stainless steel, like these deep blacks. Coated aluminum also works great. The color of the coatings makes all the difference with some colors like blacks and greens working well across a wide range of frequencies, while red was much more particular about the frequencies used to engrave. But once you find the right settings, the speed of the Galvo made quick work of engraving all of these business cards. Deep engraving on brass was also easy on the MOPA Compact 20. Lightburn's 3D slice feature makes these 3D engravings easy, and it took about an hour and a half to engrave 0.75 millimeters deep on these brass coins. Opaque acrylics also engrave well. You can achieve a very high contrast white while engraving on black acrylic. These keychains look great, and the ruler is the correct scale. It is easy to use too much power on acrylic, which can cause bubbling and distortion. The contrast can create some beautiful images. I like the detail in the pictures of my black cat. My white cat, however, would need some more tests to find the brightness and contrast settings needed. You can engrave the same crisp engravings on other plastics. This 3D printed PLA part has a durable white engraving. Imagine the possibilities with text and labels on 3D printed parts. However, lighter colors may not engrave. These pastel colored PLA prints didn't engrave at all, regardless of frequency or Q pulse duration. So when in doubt, choose darker colored plastics. Other natural materials like slate also worked well. It didn't remove much material, but it did engrave with a brilliant surface finish. And thanks to the Galvos, I was running at speeds much faster than diode lasers could achieve with slate. Following the pattern, darker leathers engraved fine. The text is crisp, and there is a decent range of settings to get the contrast that you're looking for. However, lighter colored leathers won't engrave. The laser didn't seem to affect it. Throughout my test, I was using the Omtech 80 watt 3 stage fume extractor to control fumes and particles. I'll have a separate review of this fume extractor coming soon, but it worked perfectly with the MOPA Compact 20. There's plenty of room to position the hood, and it was effective in clearing smoke and engraving dust. So in conclusion, I found the Omtech MOPA Compact 20 fiber laser a very capable fiber laser. The MOPA laser source gives you that extra bit of control when compared to other non-MOPA fiber lasers. The extended 1kHz to 4000kHz frequency range, along with the Q-pulse duration adjustments, lets you fine-tune the settings needed for almost any material. The MOPA Compact 20 is a workhorse for metal engraving, with its deep engraving capabilities, and the colors achieved on stainless steel are breathtaking. While I wasn't impressed with EZCAD, the fact that the MOPA Compact 20 is Lightburn compatible makes up for that. It will require a bit of testing and experience to find the best settings for any new materials, but once it's dialed in, the results are spectacular. The Omtech MOPA Compact 20 sells for $2,699 US dollars at the time of recording. If you are watching this shortly after the video is released, then Omtech's Black Friday and Cyber Monday event is about to start. 
The sale begins November 11th, 2024, and it'll bring the Mopa Compact 20's price down even further to $2,399. Omtech is going to have site-wide deals and weekly giveaways, so take a look at what they have to offer. Even without the sales price, the Mopa Compact 20 is on the less expensive side when compared to other 20-watt Mopa lasers. Include the sales discount, and the Mopa Compact 20 is even more enticing. If you are looking for a fiber laser for metal engraving or for darker plastics and natural materials, then the flexibility of the Omtech Mopa Compact 20 could make it the laser for you. So thank you all for watching my review of the Omtech Mopa Compact 20 Fiber Laser. What was your favorite feature? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. I have plenty of upcoming projects and reviews in the works, so be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And if you are still in the market for a fiber laser engraver, why not check out my review of the GWIC G2 Pro 30W Fiber Laser. It might be exactly what you're looking for. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.